Hello and welcome everyone to our latest webinar. My name is Sir Rajiv. I'm the head of research at Fundamental Research Corp. Our guest today is Kevin Brewer, the CEO of CMC Metals. We initiated coverage on CMC back in February of this year. The company is advancing a portfolio of silver focused uh, polymetallic projects in BC, Yukon, and Newfoundland. Uh, one of its key properties is close to core mining in Silver Tip Mine, which is one of the highest silver grade zinc, uh, zinc silver lead mines in the world. So the agenda for today is I'll kick off the call with our outlook for silver and silver stocks. And Kevin will take over from there and introduce us to his portfolio and explorations plan for this year. Listeners, you can either wait till the end to ask questions or if you have questions during the presentation, you can submit our questions and we'll respond to them at the end. Here are some key disclaimers. Please take a moment. All right, so let's get started. Here's a chart showing the performance of mainstream uh, precious and base metal prices. Precious metals have clearly outperformed uh, amid a weaker US dollar. Gold is up 6% and silver is up 11%. Let's take a quick look at our outlook for base metals, the primary driver of which is global GDP growth. As you can see, GDP growth is expected to slow this year um, across all of the main regions, and this should result in softer demand for base metals. Now, in terms of supply demand balance, the copper market is expected to move from a deficit to a surplus. Zinc is expected to see a decline in deficit, while nickel is expected to see an, exp uh, see an increase in the surplus. Now, all these scenarios we believe should put downward pressure on base metals prices in general. Now, moving on to precious metals, I have several reasons for being positive on gold and silver, but today let me focus on the, one of the most important factors, which is that we are expecting interest rates and yields to decline in the second half of the year. The US Fed is meeting this week to make a decision on interest rates, and we are expecting them to pause rates and potentially start cutting rates in the second half of this year amid cooling inflation and rising financial instability. And we believe such a scenario has been historically very conducive for gold and silver prices. And we are expecting gold to hit somewhere near $2,100 per ounce and silver to hit, hit over $28 an ounce this year. And those forecasts are based on our historic, the historic relationship between metal prices and the US money supply and inflation. Now, Here's a performance summary of silver stocks versus the metal prices and also market key market indices. You can see here that silver stocks have significantly under, underperformed metal prices last year and even based on last past five years. And even when, it, when you compare it to market indices, silver stocks have not performed, uh, have, have underperformed these indices. Uh, we believe the market sentiment has, has been uh, negative for miners and uh, metal stocks in general. And we are, we believe, and that's because of, because of rising production costs. Now we feel that a potential rally in gold and silver prices should bring uh, investor or positive sen into investor sentiment into the sector. And in terms of sector valuations, here is a chart showing a number of silver miners versus silver explorers. And we feel that the an average producer is trading at about two dollar fifty cents per ounce, and explorer is trading at about eighty cents per ounce. Now these multiples are down twenty percent year over year. So we feel that a potential rally in silver prices should inc should result in higher sector valuations. And um, you, and the the reason why I'm showing you this is that you can use these multiples for getting a preliminary idea of the fair value of the silver stocks you are looking at. Now with that, let me welcome Kevin Brewer of CMC Metals. Kevin, you'll be able to share your screen in a second. Please go ahead when you're ready. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to, uh, nice to see you all today. And uh, I hope uh, that you'll uh, with this presentation today. We're gonna to be talking about uh, 
uh, our activities in what's called the Rancheria Silver District. It's a district that extends from north central BC in the Yukon. It's a, it's a belt that's about 130 kilometers by 50 kilometers in size. And uh, we consider that this is an emerging silver district, very comparable to the Coeur d'Alene in Idaho. We feel that that uh, say, if you were to turn the clock uh, forward about 20 years, you'll see that uh, there'll be many silver projects and mines in this uh, area at that time. Uh, I got to advance this, uh, no, how do I advance it? Uh, no, I'm gonna make some forward looking statements today. So why buy CMC Metals Limited? We're on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture and our symbol is CMB. We are basically a high risk, high reward play. We have excellent positioning in this silver district. There's really only a couple of us in this district. It's us and Core Mining and one other company. And we've got a great position in it with uh, four properties. Our projects are based on good science and lots of homework. We have a pipeline of other projects in the company, which I won't be talking about today, but we have other properties in Newfoundland and Labrador. And we do what we say we are going and, and we, uh, we are going to continue to do that. Uh, our, here's a location of our properties. And you can see that we've got four properties in fairly close proximity. Uh, in the, in the uh, Rancheria Silver District area. We're about four uh, hours drive out of Whitehorse. Now, uh, I'm going to talk very brief Silver Heart. It was our flagship property, it still is. Uh, we're, we did a large uh, program last year, 4,500 meter drill program. There's been work done on that project for 35 years in total, dates back to the mid 1980s. Last year, we found new mineralized zones in the neighboring Blue Heaven property. So we call them uh, the Silver Heart Project together. We found new veins in the main zone. And we have many anomalous zones that we have yet to explore. But we did feel as a result of uh, some uh, of our drill program last year that we needed to take a step back and review this project. So we hired a company called Ronica McKenzie out of, out of Toronto and uh, area. And uh, they have both uh, geology and geoscience in the house expertise. They compiled all the data going back to 2010. That compilation has just been completed last week. And now they're going to do an interpretation of those results and give us guidance on how we should go forward with exploration in 2024 and beyond. So we have not forgotten about the some people and all the, the company is abandoning it. No, we're not. It's got uh, lots of potential and we will be drilling there in the future. So here we are, this is the project for this year. And uh, so we got the Silver Knife Prospect and as Sid noted, we are literally one kilometer away from the silver tip mine that's operated by, uh, that's uh, owned by Core Mine. It's one of the silver, highest grade silver underground mines in the world. So it's great to have a prospect right next to them. And you can see how close this is. The, uh, this is a, a picture of their property. So, what are they Let's talk they're doing for a minute because it's very important to uh, to our project as well. Their senior VP of exploration is a lady called Hoifi McGrath. She just came into their company this year and she took a look at all of their properties and determined that the resources at Silvertip were likely a small part of a larger mineralizing system. And there's evidence that the resources outlined to date are only one of several potential mineralizing spokes. In other words, this is, they found a sort of a center, but there are many new, they expect that they will find numerous deposits in this area. They've, they've conducted $53 million of exploration from 2018 to 2022. They did 300,000 meters of drilling in that period of time. 
and they've expanded their resources considerably. And they've recently noted that they, they increased their measured and indicated resources by over 7 million tons of very, what they describe as very high grades of, of silver, uh, zinc, and lead. So it's a great project to be by. Now, this is a, a figure, and I will post it on our website, so it'll be a little bit clearer to everybody. But you can see that their deposits are, are right next door to us. So uh, this, this is their deposits here, Silver Creek, Discovery, uh, and Camp Creek. And they, they've been working their way down here. Now, the neat thing is, is if you, the conductivity is in the background and that links into uh, a conductivity that extends onto our property. The Silver Knife Prospect is right here. And, and we're also working on another conductivity belt in, in this area here. And I'll sh shortly tell you why we're, why we're in that belt. So there's a lot of linkages in this system and I think we're all a part of it. And also you can see that the conductivity extends probably also into the lower part of uh, the southernmost part of our property. Here's, a, here's again, and they're, what the, they are doing is they are committing significant resources. The most expiration in their company is going into silver tip area, and that speaks volumes. In fact, they're going to do 250,000 meters of, of drilling underground and surface in this area in, in the next three years. Now, what else have they been saying? They have just recently applied for the primary inclusion of silver tip in the Canadian critical mineral strategy. We know that they've announced that they've identified germanium, gallium, and indium in their drill results. And this has a huge potential for us because we feel that this shows that there is identified potential for critical minerals in the Rancheria Silver District. And we've checked other files and we found similar findings in other assessment reports of other companies that were acting critical minerals have been identified. Now, uh, I'll just give you one example of uh, what this means in terms of critical minerals. You take a mineral like gallium, it's being now examined by three research centers in the United States in a thing called the National Renewable Energy, Energy Laboratory. But what they're trying to do is produce a new power module that will convert battery voltage so that it can be used to power electrical engines in cars. So all of this ties into the energy strategies and all of that stuff. We could have an entire presentation on critical minerals, but I just wanna mention that we will be testing for these minerals, not only in our Silver Knife Prospect this year, but we also will be testing it for on our drill core in Silver Heart. So we're going to take a close look at these elements. Uh, at the Silver Knife, we also know that there was mineralization already identified on that property. So there was a prospect actually called Silver Knife. It had identified through drilling 363,000 tons of material. And it had weighted assay average values of 511 grams ton silver, 3.7 grams ton gold, 12.5% lead, and 4.8% zinc. Now, if you're not salivating at those grades by this time, you should be because those are amazing grades. And it just shows that in this part of the Rancheria Silver District, you are getting very high grade silver lead zinc carbonate replacement deposits and these deposits come in clusters so being next door it's great now what we did was we flew an airborne in march of 2021 and then we followed it up with a gravity survey and we've identified a big gravity anomaly now gravity anomalies are important in that silver is lead and zinc are heavy and gravity identifies heavier rocks than the surrounding rocks. So if you've got a gravity anomaly, it's likely that you've got lead and zinc down there and we can't explain it otherwise. The other thing that was interesting about when we looked at the Silver Knight Prospect is you can see the drill holes here from the old prospect. 
and you can see that they were on the edge of the edge of the conductivity chart. When those were drilled, that company did not know the conductivity targets that we know that are there today. So, so we're going to be taking a deeper look at this. Here it is, the, the entire conductivity extends from east to west on the property, which is, and, and you can, what, we're, what we did last year was you can see the grid that we covered in the gravity last year to identify the anomaly that we were going to drill this year. But we're going to extend that down to cover the silver knife prospect and this area of conductivity. And that's starting at the beginning of July. So we'll have those results by the end of July and probably be able to drill, build those into our drill program this year. Here's the gravity anomaly we're going to drill. Here's the plan. It's a fairly sizable gravity anomaly. And this was also the way that uh, CORE identified some of their new targets was to use the airborne, then use gravity, and then go in and drill these things. So this is a successful method of, of identifying carbonate replacement deposits in this area. We got a 3,000 meter ramp. It, the nice thing about the, uh, this as well, we talk a bit about the hub and spoke model. Here it is. So there's silver tip, but what you see is they've got spokes going out in all different directions. Our property is, is right here and it's right on one of their, their major spokes and structural areas. So we've got the structure, we've got the hub and spoke. And we also, from their data, we now know that the limestones, which are very important in hosting these carbonate replacement deposits are thick. They're, they're in anywhere from 250 to 350 meters in thickness, and they are mineralized throughout in the silver tip area. So these can create some very significant uh, deposits in terms of volume and size. And the last thing about this area, and you, you see our property outlined in blue here, is if you look at the geology, it's repeated. So the pink, purple, and blue, pink, purple, and blue. And, and those, those units are, uh, and, the, and the blue there is the, is the limestone. So, so that comes into our property. We know there has to be a thrust fault there for this to be offset like this. This at one stage was somehow together. So we, we are in the right geology. And, and so the target is the McDane limestone. We're going to be drilling it. And uh, we've got those structural corridors going right through this area as well. So you got the structure, the geochem, the geology, the potential for critical minerals. And we're located right next door to one of the highest grade underground silver lead zinc mines in the world. So this is why this is a great target. We, we feel also that we have a property eight kilometers away to the west. That's got an historic resource on it as well. Uh, great grades as well. Three, uh, 367 grams ton silver, 6% zinc and 2% uh, lead and some beautiful grades. We'll get around to drilling that uh, in probably 2024. We have to permit that project this year and put a new road into it. So in summary, we are a high risk, high reward play. We have excellent positioning in this emerging silver district in Canada. We feel now it has a potential critical minerals play. We've done a lot of science and a lot of homework on these things. Before we decide, 3,000 meters in should be anywhere about 10 to 15 meters, 10 to 15 holes. Uh, they'll go anywhere from about 300 meters to as short as maybe 100 meters in length. We do what we say we are going to do, and we work hard, and we are an undervalued cheap stock. And I suggest that you go and buy it today, TSV CMB. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, Sid might have some questions for me now. Yeah, no, thank you so much, uh, Kevin, for that. We can open the call to a Q&A. Listeners, if you have any questions, please feel free to type in, type them in, uh, or you can raise, uh, click on the raise hand option and I can unmute you. Uh, but um, I think it's a good uh, place and time for us to add some disclaimers here. 
uh, about, uh, you know, uh, past performance is not indicated of future performance. And as well, as well as I want to say that if you have not seen our report, uh, please make sure you go to our platform research, frc.com, check for CMC medals. You can see our initiating report we published earlier this year. Uh, we have a target price and you can see our rationale and valuation model and how we came up with the fair value estimate for CMC. But yeah, so Kevin, while I compile these questions, uh, if I may, I would like to pick your brain on, you know, some things on how to tackle these kind of deposits, because we our audience is filled with both uh, mining savvy and maybe not so savvy uh, investors. So how do companies tackle, uh, you know, carbonate replacement deposits, which tend to be formed in clusters? Uh, do you, when you drill, or you have a drill, drill program coming up, are you going to drill multiple targets same time and see which targets you need to do detailed exploration? Or do you delineate resources at one by one and go from there? So uh, with the gravity anomalies, I split a couple. Uh, so there are a couple different targets there that we're going to hit. So we're kind of doing a broad, uh, broad range program on it initially. And, and as we start to identify uh, mineralized uh, sections, then we can narrow in the, in the zones. Uh, silver tip was not, uh, was a geophysical play. It was not exposed on surface and neither is uh, silver knife. Uh, so, so we're under some cover there. And it's a little bit of a disadvantage because of course you always like to see rocks, but there we go. Um, we, we use whatever tools we can and that's why we use the airborne and the combined gravity this time to identify the targets. Can you please tell, tell me, tell us more about your upcoming drill program? I think it's a 3000 meters program. Which would be your primary targets? Would you be looking at confirming the historic target on this property? So people are going to ask, first of all, are we permitted? I've been in conversations with BC. I'm expecting the permit in my hands within the next week or so. Uh, and uh, so uh, that's all in place. Uh, we've also been uh, working busy to get our camp ready. We had to buy a new industrial camp. We got one cheap. We've been uh, we've been developing it, and people tend to forget all those important things that people have to have places to live and work. So we've uh, built a new industrial camp to support this operation, and uh, that takes a lot of effort. And and uh, and. And finally, the drill drillers are uh, are supposed to go in there at the first of July, and uh, we've been in touch with them. Everything is on schedule, and uh, so we'll be uh, we'll be ready to roll. And we should start to uh, see uh, what uh, what we're getting. I I think a hole will take anywhere from three to five days uh, per hole, and. Uh, and of course, with this type of mineralization, you see it in the core. It's not like gold where you might not see it. We'll see the silver, we'll see the lead, and the zinc and the silver mineralization in that. We know when we're in mineralization, and when we're not. So, so it'll be pretty obvious to us. And we'll, we'll try to put out those, uh, those indications when we see visible mineralization and keep, keep people updated on how the drill program is going and going. Okay, thank you, Kevin. So for, for listeners here, I just want to give you some perspective on the target that um, Kevin just uh, mentioned earlier on the Silver Knife property. They have a target um, a historic number, which has grades of five, over 500 grams per ton silver and over 12.5% lead and another 5% zinc. Now, these are extremely high numbers. For example, for silver, any number is over 100, 150 grams per ton is considered good. So you're talking about 500 grams per plus ton here for CMC. And uh, zinc and lead combined, uh, anything over 10% is good, uh, is very good actually. And these historic numbers show about 17% lead and zinc combined. So these are extremely high grades that we're looking at now. Uh, but as we discussed or mentioned earlier, these deposits tend to form in clusters. So obviously, due to your proximity to core, 
uh, you know, CMC or project could be a good acquisition target at some point, if you are able to achieve X, what would that X be? How would you want to, you know, get core impressed uh, on your property? Well, I'm certainly hoping that uh, we'll, we'll hit on the gravity anomaly this year. And I'm also hoping that the, the new gravity survey covering the Silver Knight prospect and those conductors is going to identify new targets. We do know from the reports back in the 80s on the Silver Knight prospect that it was wide open still in, the, in the, both the depth and in Western extent. Uh, that, that prospect did extend on to the, to the core area. Now, we, we, we think that uh, it's, uh, you know, core is planning to expand their mill uh, before they renew operations at that site. And, and if we uh, are provide a good ore source to them, I'm sure that they will avail of that uh, source or they'll be interested in it. And so we have a very high expectation at the end of the day that, you know, once we start identifying resources in these areas, that, uh, that will be uh, a very interesting uh, group to core in uh, at that time frame and uh, will help them provide or to their uh, their operations in the in the say within the next uh, medium term more like uh, four to four to seven years got it now i don't know how much you can disclose but uh, have you met with course team in the past or are you are they do you know that they are looking at your activities in the region we we work together on the airborne survey. Uh, we we're in touch with their geological crew. Uh, where uh, we've been invited to go on a tour of their property this year for the first time, and we've been unable to do that before because of COVID and related uh, events. So uh, we we're we're groups that are are talking to each other, and uh, they're watching us, and we're just going to exchange information on our on our projects and uh and see where it goes from there so it's more of a relationship at the technical level right now uh but um but we've also been in touch with the executives in the past i used to have a, a good relationship with the former executive vice president of exploration uh, I, I haven't uh, yet talked to hoifey mcgrath but i'm certainly open to uh talking to her at any time okay now in terms of you have a huge portfolio. Um, is it fair to say that 80% of your focus will be on this property this year? Um, how do you want to allocate your resources for the coming 12 months? Yeah, so we we are fully funded for the for the drill program. Uh, where we uh, and uh, and I can I can suggest that probably 80 uh, 80 percent or more, possibly even up to 90 percent of uh, of our budget this year will be allocated to silver knife uh we we are doing a, a lot of a spend on the homework side on silver heart and i will be uh i've invested some monies already in the newfoundland projects but i don't think we will be doing too much work in newfoundland this summer i really want to focus our attention on this silver knife uh, project okay um Management skin in the game is something we always look for. And that is something that we were really impressed with the story when we did our initiating report, uh, USL Kevin and the chairman, uh, John Bosio, uh, both of you combined at that point owned about seven, eight percent of the company's equity. Um, what else can you talk about companies, shareholders? Um, do you have any institutional holding? And um, yeah, just a split of key shareholders, please. Well, you know, when I started with this company in 2019, we had zero institutional hold. And uh, and we, we've since changed that. We've got about 15% institutional holding right now. So, some good names, uh, Crest Cats, Broad Asset Management, other great companies that, that are backing us. In, in fact, we believe that a lot of those funds came in, not necessarily for our activities at Silverheart, but because of this prospect called Silverknife. And 
And that was their interest in coming into the project. So this, this is very important to this company at this stage. But we have we know we have a lot of interest out there and a lot of eyes to this to this project. And, and once we start to hit at this, this could be a game changer for this company. So so uh, yeah, it's taken a lot of effort and a lot of work, but uh, we've got skin in the game and we're we're working hard to try and make this happen. On the technical side, we are back by some excellent uh, people. Uh, we've got intelligent exploration geophysicists with over 45 years of experience in the industry who've also worked with CORE on their stuff. So these are people that know this belt. We got Ronica McKenzie on the geology and geosciences side. We've been beefing up our board. I put two geologists on the board this year. And I've also got some uh, some geologists that are working with me this summer, a guy called Cesar Simmons. He's just come from Mexico. He's got experience with CRDs in Mexico. So uh, so we got a pretty good team at this point for a very small company. Okay. I have a few questions. Uh, more, I want to say technical, but not that technical. But let me just um, throw it at you. Uh, what are the dimensions of the big gravity anomaly? And have you analyzed any of your cores for the critical minerals? We haven't uh, drilled there. The uh, historical core, it's Silver Knight Prospect. I, you know, it's, it was just left on the ground, really in boxes, and none of them are labeled anymore. So they're not of any use to us, unfortunately. So, uh, so. When we get when we get drilling this, the the anomaly itself uh, looks to be about six hundred uh, meters by uh, about, about four hundred meters in its widest point, probably averaging about two hundred and fifty meters in width. It uh, should be encountered at a depth somewhere around fifty to seventy five meters, and looks to have a, a good depth extent then of uh, of a couple hundred meters or more. We expect these limestones to be fairly thick again, up to 300, 350 meters in thickness. And, uh, and so uh, that's, uh, that's the kind of the size of the project. And the original silver tip, you could probably, uh, in that size and area, you could probably fit a couple of the original silver tip deposits into that area. How do you compare, you mentioned some dimensions, how do you compare those dimensions to a typical uh, deposit? Because um, uh, most of us don't know what, you know, what dimensions should be for such deposits. Oh, that's a good, that's a tough one, Sid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't really thought about it that much that way, but, 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 but I, yeah, I just kind of sized it up about uh, how, you know, the size of the original area that Silvertip had in relation to where we were. But the, but the dimensions you mentioned were how, yeah, how you fit a couple of those deposits. Sorry. No, I, I was saying the dimensions you mentioned were 500 meters by... Oh, no, 600 meters by uh, average about 250 meters wide. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the upcoming drilling program. Uh, there's a question again on how many meters is this program, and do you have enough cash? You already already mentioned you are fully funded. But do you mind disclosing how much cash you're in the treasury now, and um, how long will that take you? Yeah, we're we're sitting around a million and a half. Uh, we may uh, we may decide to increase it at some point in time. I mean, the thought is, is that if we get in there and uh, hit some initial, we'll try to expand this program out to about 10,000 meters this year. So we will we will go back to the market. If we start to hit some positive stuff here, we're going to go to, back to the market pretty quickly and, and look to that. And our, our funders are interested in, in working with us on that. So... So we've got our homework done on that side of things as well, in case we need to uh, expand this program quickly. We know also we can put additional drills on the, on the project. So uh, that, uh, 
we can quickly ramp this up to be a much bigger project. Now, I know that drilling costs have gone up a lot, 30, 40%, or even higher in some cases since the pandemic. Um, how much are you paying now for a dollar per meter terms for drilling? Well, you know, it's going to be, uh, we used to come in around, uh, yeah, you're right. We used to come in around 300 bucks a meter all in cost. Okay. And, and now uh, with these road accessible projects, you, you can come in around 400 bucks a meter all in cost. So what I mean by all in cost is that's paying for everything. That's paying for the groceries. It's paying for the gas. It's paying for the trucks, the people, uh, you know, the cooks, uh, you know, everything like that. So that's all in Calls at the end of the day, and uh, so it'll, it'll be around four hundred bucks a meter. Okay. So, so the drilling, uh, if you take three thousand meters, you should come in roughly about one point two, one point three million. Got it. So uh, I don't see any more questions, but Kevin, um, do you mind giving us some upcoming catalysts? What should we look out for? Um, and, um, you know, what would be your ideal kind of flow of news and what do you expect, please? Well, we're going to have an interpretation of Silverheart. Uh, as I said, it, it's our flagship property. And we're far from, uh, far from uh, dealing with that uh, yet. I mean, there's a lot more to do there. So we're going to have some news come out on that. Uh, second of all, with Silver Knife, of course, the drilling will start in July, so we'll have we'll have some news out of that late July, mid August, probably, in uh, some initial holes, and so that'll be in our catalyst. And and as a result of that, then if you see an additional uh, raise going on, you'll will be looking to to increase the size of this project, which again I think will be a critical catalyst and a good sign that. Uh, that this company is going to the next level. Got it. So I have uh, one more question that just came in now. Any updates on the properties in Newfoundland? No, not at this time. I, I mean, we've uh, we just issued all the assessment reports and, and done all the things we need to do. I am uh, going to be in Newfoundland a lot myself, so I'm going out on those properties and, and doing some of the work myself. We're still very interested in Bridal Vale. It's, it's, uh, it's on the east side of Gander, uh, literally only 15 kilometers away from Newfound Gold's Play. Try to understand them better. We're still working away at that one. So uh, there will be work done on that one this summer. All right, so I just show you, showed you a screenshot of our report. Uh, our report on CMC again is available on our platform research, frc.com, and search for the company name CFC Bandles to see all of our reports and notes we've done on the company in the past. Uh, Kevin, any final thoughts? No, thank you very much. Uh, TSXB, CMB, take a look at us. I think we're, we're a pretty good play. We've always uh, given people an opportunity to make money in the past on our stock. And, and uh, we certainly are working hard to grow our value. And uh, this is a great story and a, a great silver district to be in. And uh, we hope uh, for success this summer. And thank you for attending this uh, seminar to uh, hear our story today. No, thank you, Kevin, and also to everyone in the call for taking time today. A recording will be uploaded on our YouTube channel shortly. Please ensure you subscribe to our channel and also sign up to a member of our platform, as I mentioned, researchfrc.com. You'll get alerts when we publish new reports. And of course, you'll be able to see all of our list of um, top picks. Thanks again and wish you all the best and stay safe.